Good morning or afternoon everyone. This is Mark here and today I'm going to take you through a little bit of our Warehouse Insight product. So the plan for today, a uh, quick PowerPoint to, uh, to go through and give you some background and then we're going to jump right into the demo and uh, go through that. So, you know, if you're here, you probably already know why you want to do barcoding, but just to touch on a couple of the, you know, key returns on investment. One is inventory accuracy and the other is the timeliness of that information. So inventory accuracy, you know, manifests itself in a few different ways. Number one, if, if you send somebody out to pick product in bin A, they're not going to be running around the warehouse for an hour trying to find it. We have a high degree of confidence that that product is bin A because our inventory is accurate. And it gets accurate because we're physically verifying everything we do, right? We pick up a, an item, we scan it. And we verify that, yes, that is actually what we're doing, right? The system is getting a physical verification that we're doing what it thinks we're doing. And that way our virtual world in Business Central and our physical world stay in sync. And that, that applies everywhere. So if I'm shipping something, I'm not going to be able to ship the wrong product and then I have to ship it back and ship the right one out and all that kind of hassle. If I scan this brown box versus that brown box, it's going to yell at me if I'm trying to ship the wrong thing. And that saves a lot of money. And that timeliness of information is important, too, because we're largely eliminating paper-based processes. So we're not having to wait for somebody to hand in a piece of paper and somebody else to type it in and post it and all those sorts of things. This is all happening in real time in the shop. And that's going to give you much better ability to make decisions and provide answers to customers and things like that. All right. So those are the two reasons why, well, two of the reasons you might want to go with barcoding. Given that, and you said, yeah, I knew all that. Don't waste my time. Why would you go with Warehouse Insight? Well, Warehouse Insight, again, it's, it's been around for a long time. We've got thousands of users. And it has a great deal of functionality. So it extends Business Central and NAV. So the one thing I didn't mention earlier is we do support NAV 2013 all the way up to you know Business Central Cloud. So all of those versions. But all the new goodies, all the new features are, are Business Central first and maybe NAV later. So if you're on NAV, you really want to look at upgrading to Business Central at some point, but we can support the old NAV systems as well. But back to what we do, we extend Business Central to provide that, that barcoding functionality to provide a lot more of the workflows that streamline your access to, to the warehouse. So, and at a price that, that is, you know, significantly less than what you'll find in a sort of third-party standalone WMS solution. So there are reasons you might want to go with the standalone external WMS solution, and you're going to pay, you know, five or 10 times the cost of Warehouse Insight. But really, that, that's what you want a Warehouse Insight for. It's, it's got all the functionality you need at a you know, much lower price point than what you'll find with, with sort of comparable solutions. We also allow you to extend the solution and build your own applications on it. So Warehouse Insight is built on a platform where we designed a development platform and then we built Warehouse Insight on top of that. So you can actually use that to build your own applications, change the way the existing applications work, all of that kind of stuff. And when I say you can do it, I actually mean you. If you have the internal expertise, that's wide open. Anybody can go in and do whatever they want with the solution. Okay? Um, we do have Windows support. So if you're coming from a legacy system, you're upgrading or, or something like that. If you have Windows devices in your facility already, we can likely use those. But anything new is going to be Android. So all the device manufacturers, it's, it's all Android now. That's all you get. We don't have iOS support, and we typically don't see that in the warehouse. It's, it's almost always Android and, and sometimes Windows tablets or uh, legacy Windows devices. Now, if you do have questions on hardware, we can supply that hardware as well. So if you come come to us for your uh, for Warehouse Insight or your WMS, we'll provide the software, of course. We can provide the hardware. It comes preloaded. I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, we quite often do the implementation on behalf of the partners or we'll assist your partner to do the implementation and we'll provide the ongoing support for the product. So you've got one company to come to for all of your WMS requirements. All right, enough of that selling stuff. Let's talk about hardware. I'll show you some of this uh, on the screen here in a sec, but really, you know, these rugged, you know, scanner devices is typically what we're going to see in the warehouse, right? Very similar to what you see there. Now you can use phones, you can use tablets, those types of things. 
uh, phones aren't a good choice for warehouse use. They're not rugged, they're not ergonomic, they're you know, slower to scan with the camera than a dedicated uh, scanner, those types of things. But if you're a warehouse supervisor that you only occasionally need to scan, you know, a phone is a great choice. Or if you're an outside sales guy, you might want to use a phone. Or if you want to do a proof of delivery app, maybe a, a phone makes sense. At any rate, you can get a hold of us or, or go to the, the website. It's got a buyer guide on there that'll help you figure out what kind of hardware you need or give us a shout and we'll help you out. All right. Now, related to that is the barcoding. And again, our, our barcode generator tool will generate these types of barcodes. We don't care what type of barcode you use. Ideally, you want your vendors to barcode the incoming material for you. You want things to show up at your door with a barcode. That's the ideal solution. But if you have to do your own barcoding, like you're doing manufacturing, you're producing finished goods, things like that, or maybe some vendors just won't barcode, what we typically recommend are these data matrix codes, these square barcodes. Uh, the reason is, you know, this little guy here, if I print it out, that's half an inch square. I can hold 40 characters worth of text in it. So I can fit things like item number, lot number, expiration date, unit of measure, quantity, variant code, all of those types of things I could fit in that barcode. And then I've got one scan to bring everything in. And then I'm not scanning multiple barcodes. Or if I make it bigger, like I make it an inch and a half square, like the one above it, with the right scanner, I can hit that from 40, 50, 70 feet away, right? So having that type of thing on a pallet or on your top rack or whatever, I don't have to get out of the forklift to scan the barcode. I can scan it from a distance, all of those sorts of things. So this is the type of barcode we, we like, but we really don't care what type of barcode is on the product. We can scan anything, we can interpret it, we can read it out of Business Central um, based on item reference or cross-reference. All right, with that, let's jump in and have a look at the demo. So what I'll be doing is I'll be going through and using Business Central uh, anytime we need to jump in and, and look at that. But really what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing everything on this scanner. So what you're seeing now is, is my webcam. This is the scanner I'll actually be using in the demo. And over here is the screen from that scanner on the side. So you can see as I touch the screen on my physical device here, you're gonna see it update on, on this side here. Now, <clears throat> Just a quick note on this hardware, this happens to be a, a CK65, you know, a physical keypad. You can see it's got these F keys like F6, F7, that kind of thing. It has a camera. This actually happens to be a long range scanner, so I can actually scan up to about 50 feet away with this particular scanner, uh, you know, those types of things. So this is a pretty typical device. Here's one, this is running our, our WMS Express product, so you can kind of see just from the icons a little bit of the difference in, in the uh, capabilities of the two products. But this little guy here uh, can be used for Warehouse Insight or, or WMS Express, under 600 bucks, nice little unit, uh, camera, all that kind of stuff, and uh, quick and easy. And the nice thing is if you get the hardware from us, it comes preloaded, and you scan a couple barcodes, and you're up and running. And finally, another you know data logic device, very similar to, to this guy. But those are some of the devices, or you know if you want to use a, a tablet, uh, you can you can use that as well. All right, so that's what I'll be doing. I'll be using this guy to to do the scanning, and the types of things I'll be scanning are these barcodes here. So these are the data matrix barcodes I, I mentioned, and this sheet is generated from our, our barcode generator sheet or uh, app. So I I went in and defined all these sample barcodes, and this is actually what I'll be scanning as we get into the demo, just so you know what, what's happening. All right, with that, uh, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just briefly mention everything that we do on that handheld device is done from within Business Central. So if I wanna set up different menus, like the main menu or menus in the individual applications or columns or you know, customize the applications, create overrides, offline apps, all of these sorts of things are done within Business Central. And then those applications are loaded on the handheld device the first time we come in. So all the logic and everything we define in Business Central, and then we load it up on the handheld device afterwards. So again, all the management, everything you need to do is done from within uh, Business Central. All right, now let's go back. I'm just gonna flip over to my uh, webcam here again. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. And this guy here. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going through and, and scanning everything. Now you'll notice we're on Wi-Fi here, right? So this is just on Wi-Fi. We are connected in real time to Business Central or NAV. So uh, we do have an offline mode down at the bottom, that scratch pad up uh, down here, that you know if the network goes down or if there's a power failure or something like that, you can go offline and you know do your scanning, upload it into Business Central after the fact, 
and process of scans in Business Central. But generally speaking, we always want to be online because we want that real-time feedback. We want, you know, if somebody goes out and scans something, we want to tell them, hey, you screwed up or, you know, that's acceptable or whatever. We don't want people scanning something, you know, maybe you have a, a Wi-Fi dead spot in your warehouse. We don't want them scanning over there offline. Ten minutes later when they sink, it yells at them and tells them they did something wrong. Well, now they got to backtrack all that work. We like the real-time stuff. Okay, so again, there is an offline mode if there's uh, an emergency, BC goes down or power failure or whatever, but generally speaking, we're online all the time. Now, I'll give you a quick overview of the applications that we have here. So, you know, the first couple of these inquiry ones, I scan a barcode, tells them what it is. And again, we don't care what's in that barcode, item number, lot number, serial number, scan it, and we'll, we'll figure out what, what you're scanning. Then we've got the inventory count. We've got two modes. We've got the, the advanced count and the standard count or the basic count. Those obviously just let you do inventory counts, both cycle counts and full counts. Okay, and the advanced count does a lot more than standard business central, and I'll show you that in a bit. Then we've got receiving and put away. And the way I've got it set up is I've got a two-stage receiving process set up. I receive everything into a staging area, then I do a secondary activity to put that product away. That's a setting in standard business central. So the way we do it is you set up business central the way you would normally want to work, my recommendation is always figure out what your best practice physical processes are going to be. And then based on that, you set up Business Central to match it. And then when you fire up the scanner, it's just going to read Business Central and go, oh, that's how you want to work? Great. We'll do two-stage receiving. Uh, but if I want to receive directly against a purchase order or use an inventory put away or receive against a transfer order, I can do that as well. And I should actually mention this bin inquiry here. Uh, we don't need bins turned on. So if you're in a retail environment, as an example, you're a retail store, you can run this in a store, though WMS Express might be a, a good fit for that too, where I just want to receive product and I want to do inventory counts. So I'm not going to have bins or anything turned on. No problem. The system will work with that. Or it'll work all the way up to the advanced warehousing in Business Central. Okay, anyway, so that's receiving and put away. Then I've got the same thing sort of with picks and shipping or picks and production. I pick everything, I drop it off at shipping or I drop it off at production and somebody else takes over and does what they need. But just like in receiving, I could I could pick directly to a sales order or a transfer order, or I could use inventory picks, um, or I can you know pick directly to a, a production order as well uh, with the consumption app. So we can do consumption and output on the handheld device. If you need more robust um, production management capabilities, we do have a product called Shop Floor Insight that does a lot more than this, but if you just need that material handling for manufacturing, we do that consumption output. And we do a little bit extra on the consumption. We extend Business Central uh, in, in some important ways on the consumption side. Uh, we can also do assembly. So assemble to stock or assemble to order, we can pick to it, we can output, we can do all those sorts of things. License plating here is a bit of an advanced module. So what license plating allows me to do is build up pallets or boxes of items. Now, where that's most valuable is on outbound processing. So I can be driving down the aisle with a forklift, building up a pallet as I'm executing my pick. And if I'm using license plating, when I finish that and drop it off at shipping, I know how many pallets I have for that order. I know what the contents of each pallet. I can you know, send that information to an EDI solution or whatever you need, print packing slips. I've got all that level of detail. Or if I'm building up UPS boxes or FedEx boxes or whatever, that's what we would use license plating for. And then I just hit a button, either in Business Central or in the handheld, and I can go out and generate my UPS label or my shipping uh, or FedEx label or whatever bill of lading I need, those types of things. So again, license plating, we can use it anywhere in the warehouse, but its key usage is on outbound processing. All right. With that, let's jump in and see what these things look like. So I'm going to go in and have a look at uh, receiving to start with. So when I open up that app, what it does is it loads up all the purchase orders that I have available in my system to choose from. And I can come in here and I can do a few things. So let's say I'm, I'm at the back door. I've got three pallets in front of me from my vendor. I have my packing slip. It has my purchase order number on it. So I just find it and list and choose it and away I go. Or, you know, maybe I've got 300 purchase orders listed in here. I could just come up here and, you know, type in, you know, some of that um, uh, PO number and it'll filter the list down to that, that particular purchase order, right? Or I could just scan one of the items that's on one of those pallets and it'll filter this list down to the specific purchase orders that have that item. And then at that point, I might want to see the vendor name and, and expected receipt date and things like that. So to do that, all I have to do is tap the screen and hit choose columns here. 
and I can come in and I can show any additional information on the screen that I like. So if I wanted to show the vendor name, I could make that visible and those sorts of things. These fields that you see here, these are all defined in Business Central or NAV if you're on the, the NAV version. So I can come in here, I can add custom fields, I can add whatever I want to see on the screen and I could make that globally visible or individual users could come in and decide what they want to see and how they want to see it. So it's very configurable from, from the device side as well. All right. Now, in my case, you know, I know the purchase order number I want, so I'm just going to down arrow to that that particular thing. So, you know, a lot of these guys have the arrow keys that you can use to move things around. And then I'm going to hit enter to open that up. And it's going to bring up everything I need to receive on that particular purchase order. So there's all my items that I need to receive. Now, again, we want your vendor barcoding um, all of this for you, right? We want all this product to come in barcoded and I'm just gonna scan the boxes and start receiving. But if it's not barcoded, I can come in here and I can hit print and I can actually print barcode labels at this point. And all that's gonna do is it's gonna print whatever item label you define in Business Central and print to whatever printer is set up for this particular device and that's it. Or I could just manually come in here, choose a line, come in, hit enter or hit this change quantity. So this guy here, and enter a quantity without scanning anything. And you can actually control access to that. You can say, no, for this particular type of item, you have to scan. And this item, you can just enter the quantity without scanning, those types of things. So very flexible. But ideally, everything's barcoded. And the reason is, I'm just gonna grab something you know, off the, off the palette, and I'm gonna scan a barcode. And I'm gonna scan you know, this first one here, this 1908-S barcode, which if you look, well, I guess you can see the screen over here. That's kind of the third one down. I don't have to know what it is I'm scanning. I'm just going to grab a barcode or a box and scan it. And you can see here, now, by the way, this is a long range model. So it takes, you know, a quarter of a second sometimes to focus. So you'll see when I, I scan, it took a second there to focus, but I did eventually find it. And then um, all I did there was I scanned it. You saw it brought up a picture of that particular uh, item. And that's good if you're, if you're doing your own barcoding, right? If, if I scan that, it shows me a blue chair and I've got a pair of underwear in my hand, hopefully not my own, but anyway, I have a pair of underwear or something or a banana in my hand, I know I've got a problem with that barcode and I can potentially fix it right there. Now, at this point, I'm just gonna enter the quantity and that's it. I've now indicated to Business Central that that quantity is received. This is updated Business Central in real time and it's telling me I have eight of these things left to find within the system or with, within the shipment. So maybe later on, uh, you know, second or third pallet, I find more of these guys. I scan that barcode. Again, again, I don't have to have it, the line selected or anything. It'll just find it. And then I can uh, come in here and let's say I found five this time and I can just enter those quantities and it's just gonna keep incrementing that and reducing this. So I don't have to put everything into its own little pile and count it up. I just, as I find these things, I scan it and we're, we're good to go. Okay, so um, that's basically it for receiving. Now, if we've got lot tracked items, so I'll, I'll scan this barcode here, and this barcode has the, the lot number and the item number in it as well. And when I scan that guy, what it'll do is it'll come in and it brings in that lot number that was in the barcode. Now, if that lot number wasn't in the barcode, it would highlight that field and it would allow me to either type in a number, scan a secondary barcode for the lot number, automatically generate a lot number from Business Central, or if you wanna get fancy, we have scanners available that'll actually read text. So if you have you know, printed text for the lot number on your packaging, I could actually just scan that text, it'll OCR it and bring that in automatically. And the same thing with expiration date, quantity unit of measure, everything you see on the screen could have been in that barcode if I wanted. Now I'm just gonna enter 25 and that's basically it. I've again received 25 of that particular lot number, it's updated Business Central with the lot number, all of those sorts of things and we're done, that's that's receiving. Scan barcode, optionally enter quantity, and we're good to go. Now there's a few other things we can do here as well uh, on receiving. One of the nice things is this ability to take a picture, right? So if I use this take picture, I can take any number of photos I want if I receive damaged product, or maybe I scan a barcode and it says, hey, that item is not on this purchase order. And I go, well, the vendor shipped me the wrong thing because they don't do barcoding and they don't have that inventory accuracy. And I can take photos of that, that'll automatically upload and attach to the purchase order in Business Central, and now the purchaser has everything they need to start a claim on that particular thing, right? Damaged product or whatever. You can also you can also enable that uh, on shipping. So if you're doing LTL and things like that, you can take pictures of the pallets and the boxes before they leave, and um, 
you can uh, use that if there's a damage claim that, that comes back to you. Okay, so uh, that, that take picture thing is, is kind of handy. Now, uh, just to see what that looks like, just for fun, I'll just open that up and there's my, my photo. I can take photos, it's just normal Android stuff and, and away you go. All right, now the other thing that we can do here is that license plating that I mentioned. So again, typically we wanna use this on outbound things where we're building up pallets and boxes for shipping, but I can also build up those license plates as we're receiving goods. So if I'm unloading a container or something like that and I wanna palletize it myself, I can do that and then I can scan that license plate barcode to actually move that product into the warehouse. So that's available as well. I talked about printing. The last thing I'll mention here is this ability to post. So we can set it up so that I can automatically post as soon as I leave the screen, or I can have it set up so that somebody has to manually come in here, tap post, or use the, the F9 hotkey to post, and that will post this receipt within Business Central. So I don't have to hand in paperwork and have somebody else do anything. I can do it all from the, the handheld device here. Okay. Or if you like, you can disable that completely because you have full control over these menus. And if you don't want your receivers doing any posting, you can prevent that. Oh, and there's a question there on the, yeah. So if I scan uh, a barcode that isn't on this uh, purchase order, it's going to yell at me. It's going to say, hey, I, that item that you just scanned isn't on this. But the other side of that is if I scan an item, let's say the vendor is barcoding everything for me, I scan a barcode, it, it doesn't recognize that barcode. It's never seen that barcode before. So what it'll do, I'll just reach over here, I'm gonna grab a can of Coke, this is my lunch that I'm gonna scan. So if I scan this barcode on that, that can of Coke, what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, hey, you know what? I don't know what that is, you just scanned. What is that? And it's gonna ask me to build up a cross-reference to one of the items that's on that purchase order. So I can say, yeah, every time I scan that, that barcode, it actually relates to this particular item. And you can enable and, and disable this if you like, if you don't want your receivers building up those cross-references. But it is a nice way if you don't have those cross-references built in, like the UPC codes to your item numbers, you can actually build them up on the fly here as you're receiving. Okay, so that's basically it. That's, that's receiving in a nutshell, pretty, pretty straightforward. And, and that's basically it. So now, you know, in my case, I would post that. Uh, it'll If there's cross-docking turned on in Business Central, it'll yell at me and say, hey, there's some of these items may need to go over to shipping because they're back-ordered or whatever, and I'll send that out for, for cross-docking. Uh, and the put-away, of course, will tell us where that's supposed to go. Now, in my case, we're not going to do that. We're just going to jump right into picking. So on the picking side, uh, what this will do, and by the way, the first time I load an application, it usually takes a, a second or so more because I just rebooted this device. The first time you load it, it's reading it all in from Business Central because again, all that logic for these applications is stored and managed in Business Central. So if you notice, it takes a second extra, it's just because it's it's loading. Now, when I open this up, it gives me a list of all the pick tickets I have in the system, all the, the warehouse picks that I have enabled. And again, if you don't use warehouse picks, no problem. I would see a list of sales orders or transfer orders here, or I might see a list of inventory picks. These picks that you see here are generated in Business Central. And they use, they, they, we handle all the same capabilities that Business Central provides. In other words, we can do wave picking, we can do batch picking, like combine multiple orders into a single pick or any combination of those things. All that pick generation is done inside Business Central. Okay. So we do have some additional things that help you generate picks, but the, the basic logic for how those picks are created and everything else are done in Business Central. And then I've just got a list of all the picks that I can work on. You can assign them to individual users. So if you want to assign certain picks to certain people, you can. Or if you want to add custom fields, like maybe I want the carrier name here. I want the shipping agent so I can see, hey, I want to pick my UPS orders first. I could add that field into Business Central, show it on the scanner, and then bang, I can sort this list by, by carrier and, and decide what I'm going to pick next. Now, most people still print a paper copy of the pick ticket. And, and scan it because, hey, if there's a piece of paper on the printer, it means I have work to do, scan that barcode and it loads up the pick and away I go. And then I can drop that piece of paper off at shipping so they know what the heck I just left at their feet. In my case, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna choose this, this pick number four to work on just because I want to. And I'm gonna open that up and it's gonna bring in a list of all the items I need to pick. And again, this is where it takes an extra second to load, but that's okay, here it is. Here's the pick ticket that I need to load. And I think I mentioned this earlier, but just to, to be clear, I am connected to Business Central Cloud here in real time. So everything I'm doing is, is going from my office here over the internet to Business Central and back. And, and so this is 
you know, what you would expect uh, to see in, in your, your warehouse. All right, now, um, again, here's my pick ticket. So I've got a list of all the bins, the items, quantities, units, and measure, all that kind of stuff. That's kind of a, the, the basic standard view. The sort order is defined by Business Central by default. So by default, it's, it's by bin sort order. If you don't have bins turned on, we can show the shelf number there, or you just wouldn't see that, that bin column field at all. But the nice thing about this view, and we have two views, one is a, what we call a card view that shows me one entry at a time. And that can be handy if you're using a, a wearable device, like you can get devices that you know are not much bigger than this, and, and they sit on your, your wrist and you have a ring scanner without the physical keypad. And then you see one entry on it at a time on the screen, and I can use the ring scanner to scan and go hands-free. But generally speaking, that, that card view is good for tablets or wearables or things like that where you want to direct people, you know, one entry at a time. This view shows me all the entries uh, at once, and I can do lots of things here, like I could sort by any of these fields. So a good example is if you want to pick the heaviest items first, you can go to Business Central, add the weight field to the, the pick lines, and then expose that on the handle through configuration, and I can sort by anything I like. So now I could start picking heaviest stuff first, or I could, you know, pick by item number, instead of by bin code or whatever you want to do. So lots of different options there. Even if I don't change that sort order, this gives me a lot more flexibility, right? A lot more context, a lot more flexibility about what I need to do. So let's say, you know, it's telling me to start at, at aisle one here, right? This is aisle one, aisle two. Tell me to start at aisle one and work my way through to aisle two. I don't want to do that because I'm standing in aisle two. I'm going to go pick from, from aisle two instead. So what do I do? I walk up to the bin I want to pick from, and I scan the barcode at the bin. So I'm just going to scan, you know, one of these guys here. Technically, you don't have to scan the bin code, but scanning the bin code, again, uh, helps improve that inventory accuracy because we're telling the system, yes, you told me to pick from bin 0201. That's actually where I am. And I didn't just find a bunch of these things sitting and receiving and stole them from there and screwed up all my inventory. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to scan that, that bin code that I'm picking from. And on the screen, it tells me at the bottom, yes, you're, you're at bin 0201. And then I'm going to scan the item that I pick out of that particular bin. And for fun, we'll just do that 1908-S guy again, so the one we did earlier. Um, well, maybe I'll do the 1920, whatever, it doesn't matter. So I scan the, the barcode of the item that I'm picking out of that particular bin. It optionally shows me the picture again if I like, and you can control how long that, that thing stays up on the screen for. And then I just enter the quantity that I picked. Let's say I just picked all of them, hit enter. Oh, geez, I forgot. This one I have uh, tote picking turned on. So <laughs> let me segue into tote picking. So previously I'd gone in and, and done some tote picking. So what tote picking does is allows us to um, segregate the, the items for various sales orders as we're picking. So what I did was I scanned an item there and it said, hey, you've already assigned a tote to that, that order. And it's telling me, okay, you scanned that particular item, that's going to go into whatever it is, tote 1251. And I would scan that tote to now say, yes, I picked that item. It's going in that particular uh, tote. So um, that's basically how it would work. I would scan the item, then indicate that I'm placing it in the appropriate tote so I can segregate those items as I'm picking. Now, I don't want to show you tote picking because, well, I just kind of did. Let's go into another pick that's maybe not as, um, doesn't have as many items. Well, it's got one item on it. So we'll do this one, but I'll just show you sort of the basic, uh, you know, scenario. So again, I scan the bin. I come in, I scan the item that I'm picking on that particular, out of that particular bin. Again, optionally shows me the picture. I optionally enter the quantity. And for fun, I'm just going to enter eight here. I didn't pick the full quantity. That quantity, by the way, uh, both in receiving and in picking and anywhere else, you can default that into the remaining quantity on that line to, um, you know, quantity of one, and we don't even show that screen to zero, whatever you want. There's lots of options there. In this case, I always default it to the quantity that I'm expecting, so I can just hit enter on the keypad to, to quickly say, yes, I've picked that entire product, but I could set it up to default to zero, and they actually always have to type in a quantity. Now, in that case, I typed in eight, and it's updated Business Central with that eight, and it's told me there's four more of these things to find. Well, let's say I can't find those four. What do you do at this point? Right now, you're, you're, you've got an inventory problem. How do, how do you deal with it? Well, there's a couple of things. Because this is just an Android device, I could be running Teams on this. And the reason I mentioned Teams, in case you didn't know, Teams has a walkie-talkie mode, and it's exactly what it sounds like. I could tap you know, this button, flip over to the walkie-talkie. I flipped over to settings, but I could flip over to the walkie-talkie, hit the big red button on that, 
then I can use this device as a walkie-talkie with Teams and broadcast to everybody else on that channel. Or I could do a video call of Zoom or Teams or whatever you want to use, and I can communicate with people using this device. So instead of carrying around a separate walkie-talkie or anything else, I've got this guy in my head. But let's say I don't want to talk to anybody else. They screwed up. They ruined my life. I'm going to fix this thing on my own. So what do I do? I come in here on my keypad. I can hit the F7 hotkey. And when I do that, it drills down into the item inquiry. And it tells me everything about this particular item. So how many I'm supposed to have in stock, where I can find those in the warehouse, all of those sorts of things. So now I don't have to go running around back to the office and try and read what I wrote on the back of my hand you know, an hour later and, and figure out what's going on. I could come in here and I could figure out where else I could pick this item from. And if you're using lot warehouse tracking, so you know which lot numbers are in which bins, you could come over here and by expiration date, you could find the oldest item to, to pick as well. Okay. I can also come in here, maybe that bin was completely empty. I don't know what that thing looks like. The description is useless to me, right? Whiteboard, I don't know what that is. So I could come in here and I could show that picture again. And so that could be handy. Maybe that item is just sitting on the bin beside where it's supposed to be. I can move it over, keep going. And, and away we go. Or I could come in here, look at recent transactions, and that'll show me any outstanding picks or, or recent putaways, those types of things. So I could figure out, yeah, that's Joe. He's always picking the wrong quantities. I'll hunt him down, get my stuff back, that kind of thing, right? So again, that old ability to drill down gives you a lot more insight into what's happening in the warehouse. And you can actually make decisions out there on the shop floor with, again, without having to run back to the office later and figure it out. And that's basically it. So that's picking. Bin item quantity is the typical. If you don't want to scan bin, you don't have to. You can just scan item, default the quantity into whatever you like, all of those sorts of things. I did talk about the tote picking there. That I would show you more of the tote picking, but I don't have the, the totes in front of me, so I've got no barcodes to scan. But again, we can do that tote picking where we segregate the items out as, as we're picking. A um, whole bunch of other functions here, like all these different dealies we can do. And the license plating I'll mention again, because as I'm picking, I could actually be building up those UPS boxes or FedEx boxes or pallets or whatever I'm using for shipping. And then when I get over to shipping, if I have dynamic ship, I can generate my FedEx label and get my rates and add that cost to the sales order and all those things that you need from a, a shipping integration system. And if you want, you can extend this device to do the same thing right from the handout. So I could, at the shipping stage, I could add a menu on here that I tap and it prints my UPS label for the boxes that I generated while I was picking. So it's very, you know, very capable solution. Um, that's basically it. That's picking an item quantity. We're good to go. All right. Now, um, how am I doing for time? Oh, not bad. All right. So let's talk a little bit about um, inventory counts because you know I, I've mentioned inventory accuracy a whole bunch of times now, and so you know obviously maintaining that is very important. And you need a good tool to audit and maintain that inventory accuracy. Well, the, the tool for maintaining your inventory accuracy is what I have in my hand. Scanning those barcodes physically verifies everything I'm doing. Inventory should never get out of whack. But I do need a way to audit that, cycle counts or full physical counts. And everybody hates inventory counts. They suck. Nobody wants to do them. I don't want to do them. Having a good tool to allow you to do inventory counts quickly and easily is, is vitally important. And that's what this thing does. So if I go into this, this is what we call the advanced count. And from a handheld perspective, from a, a shop floor perspective, the advanced count and the standard count basically work the same way. They work exactly the same way. The advanced count gives us a lot better capabilities on the back end for reconciliation and things like that. Now, what you see on the screen here, these are what we call count sheets. And we really have three different ways of counting. The first way is what we call ad hoc, where I can just you know, pick up a scanner. I don't have to go into Business Central or anything. I just scan a barcode or open up the count, and I can immediately start counting things without setting anything up and, and review the discrepancies on the handheld device and all those sorts of things. So that's kind of an ad hoc count, quick cycle counts, things like that. The other two ways, we go into Business Central ahead of time and we set them up. So I've set up this you know, team one to team three here. And uh, you can name those whatever you like. They can be Fred, Joe, Frank, or West Side, East Side, Finnish Goods, whatever you want to call them. They're kind of like batches. They're just a lot more capable. They're really an electronic version of a paper-based count sheet, right? If you're used to paper-based inventory counts, you're going to go out, hand out a bunch of paper. People are going to mark it up, hand it in, and away you go. Well, now here's the electronic version of that. And so we have two ways of setting those up. One is like this Team 2 here where... I've told them there are 12 things you need to go out and find and count. 
So I've gone in and said, give me 12 random items to count today or give me all my A items or, or whatever criteria you want to use to generate a list of items to count. And again, if you're used to paper-based counts, that's what you're doing today. You're generating a list of items people are going to go out and count. The other way to do it is what I've done for team one. I haven't told them what they're supposed to go out and count. I've said, hey, here's a scanner. You go out and you scan everything you find. So rather than the system saying, hey, you should be able to find this stuff out there, we're saying, tell me everything that's physically there and we'll tell you if there's any discrepancies with what we think should have been there. Okay, so this one is great for full physical counts. You just go out and scan everything in the warehouse or if you're doing cycle counts by aisle or bin or something like that. So if I was to you know, hand this, the scanner over to you right now and said, you know, hey, go do the, the inventory count over there, you would actually know how to do that. And the reason you know how to do that is because it's the same as everything else in the system. You're going to go in, and well, it tells you at the bottom what you're supposed to do, right? Right on the screen there, it says scan bin. So I'm going to go out, I'm going to scan the bin, I'm going to scan the item, and I'm going to enter the quantity. It's the same as everything else we do anywhere in the system. So I'm going to go out, I'm going to scan a bin code, I'm going to scan an item, and uh, it's going to pop up the picture if I want, and I'm going to enter the quantity that I, I counted for that particular item, and that's it. I've now done my inventory count of that bin and that item. Simple as that. And then I go to the next bin. And by the way, we can have it remember the bin in between scans. So if you're scanning a bulk storage area or something like that, you don't have to scan the bulk bin code every single time. But if you're counting racks, we obviously want you to indicate that you've moved to the next bin and not forget to scan it. And let, you know what? Let's scan one with a, a lot number here. So scan that, that lot tracked item. And um, now I'll enter... Uh, you know, the quantity I found there, and that's basically it. So again, bin item quantity, and that's how you do your inventory count. And I've been using lot numbers a lot here, but lot numbers, serial numbers, same thing, works the same way for the most part. And that's it, that's how I do my inventory count. And now the cool thing is, once I've done that, and we go back into Business Central, so now I'm gonna just switch over here a little bit and move into Business Central to show you what this actually looks like. What I would do in Business Central is I'll come in and I'll look at that inventory count. So this is a list of all the inventory counts I've done since the beginning of time by, lo by warehouse location, everything else. This is the one I was working on here. If I open up that, that count card, we call it, we see you know, there's a bunch of general information here about what we've done. But down here are the, the count sheets that I've defined and I can open this up and see what we've scanned. This also works great for paper-based counts, right? Maybe you have a distribution center where you're doing everything on the scanner. If you have a smaller location or a parts room or something and you just want to do paper-based counts, you can do that as well. But um, this is everything I've scanned into the system. So the next thing I would do is actually come in and see what my discrepancies were on that particular count. So I'm going to show all my inventory and for fun, I'm also going to show me show the discrepancies down at the lot number level. So we actually, uh, you know, uh, reconcile at the lot number level. And I'm going to sort it by the, the dollar amount uh, difference. And when we do a preview of this, it's not all that, well, that is actually kind of magical. I was going to say it's not all that rocket magic, but it is. So what it does is it tells me, hey, you know what? This first item, I'm short $275,000. The next item, I've got an extra $234,000 and so on and so forth. And down here on that lot tracked item, it tells me exactly what the discrepancies are by lot number. So here's my total discrepancies, but down here it breaks it out to, at, at the lot number level. Now, if I post this count the way it is now, it'll actually make these adjustments to those lot numbers automatically. So you don't have to manually go in and type in lot numbers or anything else, right? So this reconciliation report tells us how well we've done on this count, and it's pretty terrible. So what do you do now? You print it out, you use a highlighter or post-it notes or whatever, and you send people to count things again. No, you don't want to do that. Highlighters are expensive, right? So what we do instead is we use recount sheets. So what I can do is I can say, come in here, and anything that's out by, say, more than $1,000 or anything that's out by more than 5%, automatically go and add that to a recount sheet. And what that'll do is it'll generate a new sheet on the handheld that just lists the items that have these discrepancies. I count those again exactly the same way, scan bin, scan item, everything else. And um, it'll keep an audit trail of the original count quantity, the recount quantity, and so on and so forth. So it really does help with the reconciliation and the recounts. Also, if you have auditors coming in, it's a huge benefit because you can do spot checks with an audit trail and all of that kind of stuff as well. So that's a little bit on the, the inventory count side of things. And actually, just for fun, 
let's go back to this. I'll just show you what, you know, if you generate a sheet for say a cycle count, this is what it would look like. Exactly the same as everywhere else. I scanned in, scan item, enter quantity. Instead of adding a new line, it's just going to find the existing line and let me change the quantity on it. So pretty simple to do inventory counts. It's the same as the rest of the system. All right, now we've got a bunch of questions here. So there's a question on uh, creating the, the picks. And again, that pick creation uh, capability is all within Business Central. So um, we, we do a little bit, of, well, actually we do a lot extra, but um, any of the capabilities within Business Central, Central for generating the pick, that's supported by this. So you're going to create the pick with standard Business Central capability. Let's let's leave it at that. So whichever way you want to use Business Central to generate the picks, that's all handled in Business Central. Once the pick is generated in Business Central, it's available on the handheld device. Okay. Um, and then there's another question on uh, controlling the movement of of materials. So yeah, picks are often used to pick for production, but I didn't mention the movement stuff here, silly me. We can do bin to bin movements. So this ad hoc move allows me to move product from bin A to bin B just by scanning, right? I don't need any instruction. I can just replenish bins use, using that. And this movement one, this is if I'm using warehouse movements or inventory movements. And the warehouse movements are, are typically used for replenishment, right? Moving product out of my bulk storage into my picking bin. So I'd go into Business Central, I'd use the movement worksheet, generate the movement, shows up on the handheld, and it tells somebody what they need to move within the facility. Okay. All right, and there's a question on shipping. Now, um, the shipping in here, if I do it from the handheld, what we would typically do on the handheld is, is build up pallets. So I'd bring up my sales order or my warehouse shipment or whatever I'm working on. It's exactly the same as picking or anything else. But at this point, anything that's being picked for this particular shipment, because I'm using warehouse shipments, I could now come in and palletize, like I could build up uh, license plates for this, palletize it, and then post that shipment right from here. So whether this is a warehouse shipment or a sales order, this is essentially what it looks like. I simply scan in what I'm going to ship, palletize it or package it if I want on the handheld, and post that shipment. The other shipping capabilities I mentioned where we can generate the shipping label from UPS or FedEx or generate bills of lading, all that kind of stuff, that's typically done with dynamic ship. So we do have webinars and recorded videos on dynamic ship if you want to see that capability. That can be extended to the handheld where I just come in here, hit a button, print out a UPS label, but all of that is done from dynamic ship itself or using dynamic ship, okay, um, which is a separate product. Okay, I think... Uh, that covers off everything I wanted to show on the handheld device, unless there's any other questions. So what I'll do is I'll just jump back in here, and we'll cover off the uh, last few things. So you're thinking, wow, that was awesome. How do I give you my money? Or what money do I need to give you? Well, the way we license it, first of all, if you go with the WMS Express, and again, that's what you saw today was Warehouse Insight, but WMS Express is that light version uh, that does the four core capabilities in the warehouse or four core requirements in the warehouse, which is receiving, picking or shipping, inventory counts, and, and bin movements, that's free. So if that's all you need, those four capabilities, that's free if you're running Business Central Cloud. If you need any of this, and, and everything I showed you today, WMS Express does. So all the stuff you've seen today, WMS Express does, with the exception of WMS Express, you can't customize it and, and do a few other things. That's free. So you don't have to pay us anything if, you, if that's all you need. If you need Warehouse Insight, the way we license it is by device. All right. So for each device that you have out there that's being used concurrently, so you could have 10 devices, but you only ever use five at any given time, you would need five device licenses from us. So for every device that's in use, you need a license. And then you need to pay Microsoft some money because they're poor and they need money. And they license it essentially the same way. They have a device license. It's also a concurrent license. So typically you'd get one of those. But there are a couple of other options. If you're on NAV, you can use an existing concurrent user license for that. And in Business Central, you could also use a named user license. So if I'm a warehouse supervisor and I already have a Business Central login, I can use that same login on the handheld device and I don't need any additional Microsoft licensing for it. You'd get the device license if you have you know, multiple people using that same device. Like I've got a device in, in picking or whatever receiving, or I might have five different people picking up that device and using it at any given time. 
you only need one license from Microsoft for that. Okay? Users are still logging into the device with whatever user ID you provide them, or they're scanning their, their badge that we generate from Business Central to log in, but you only need that one device license from Microsoft. The dynamic ship that I mentioned and the advanced inventory account that you saw on license plating, those are an additional cost as well, but it's not per device or per user or anything like that. It's just one cost, and then you get the these capabilities uh, in the system as well. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, um, if you need additional information, you can go to our website and um, uh, contact us. There's a, a chat window there, or you can just use the, the contact form. We also have other webinars, like we've we've had a few questions on dynamic ship here. Another one came in uh, with uh, for generating the label, and yes, you can. It means adding a menu item onto the handheld device, so it's like an extra hour of work or something like that. But when once that's there, we can talk to dynamic ship, generate the label, or you can generate the labels from dynamic ship inside Business Central. But check out uh, upcoming webinars for dynamic ship, or just look at YouTube or our webcasts area on our website and it has recorded videos of pretty much all the products that you can look at and review and, and see if they're good for you. The knowledge base also has a lot of documentation so it has user guides, install guides, videos, all that sort of thing on product usage and, and that sort of thing so you can check that out and if you go with one of the free products like WMS Express or the scheduler or whatever uh, there's a, an online forum there that you can use to ask support questions so you don't need a support contract or anything with us you can ask your questions there. It's quite often our support people answering those questions, uh, but you'll get your answers there without having to, to buy a, a support plan from us or anything else. So again, it's, it's completely free. You know, almost never have to talk to us for, for anything. Now, finally, on the hardware side, if you go to the, uh, the web shop there, if you just go to the main website, there's a, a menu at the top for uh, hardware that has a, you know, sort of a buyer's guide on there that'll help you decide what kind of hardware you need. It's got pricing. You can order the stuff there. If you need more than a, a few devices, contact us. There's, there's often uh, discounts for higher volume uh, purchases and, and things like that. All right, with that, thanks everybody. Uh, it was uh, nice having you on the, the chat here and uh, hopefully we'll be talking again soon. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content.